I see you. Challenger time! Yes, we have got a 2020 Dodge Challenger. And look at it in all of its boatly glory. So, this is the SXT, which is the base model. I know I've been doing the Chargers. I decided I'd hit up the Challengers too. Maybe get a little bit of info on here in case you didn't like the Charger and you wanted to do a Challenger. Well, I'm gonna do a review and I'm gonna go over everything and it's gonna be fan freaking tastic. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so the Charger and the Challenger are actually very similar. The engine and transmission are gonna be the same. The trim models are gonna be the same. So this is the base model, just like the Charger. It's gonna start out at the SXT, but of course the big difference is the look and the styling. That's where things change it up. So starting with the front, you can tell compared to the Charger, this base SXT already comes with a different hood that's not flat. You've got the functional hood scoops right here across the top. You have two of them compared to getting only that in the GT for the Chargers. So taking a look up here at the front of the Challenger. Now you can tell if you know Challengers that inside headlight right here it does not go all the way in. That is for the higher trim models for the air induction for, you know, some super speed. But for the SXT, those do not go in. It does come with fog lights on the base model. You can also see the grill that's going along with here. Just take a note of that because I will be doing a comparison to the GT so you can see what the differences are there. The Challenger's rims are very similar to the Charger's. They look exactly the same, and once you get up to RT, so the V8 version, they change to that silver and black. The same thing happens with this Challenger. You've got the side mirrors here, which I think look old school, like one of the ones that are put on aftermarket. They've got the skinny stock and the little bulb on there. Look at that, it's so cool. So bringing around to the back, it's the same thing. If you watched my Charger videos, the spoiler on this one is a flat black. And then once you get up to the V8 version or the RT, they paint this to match the color. So that's one way you can tell exactly which type of Challenger or Charger it is. V6s will have these, V8s will be painted. And you can see in dark lettering up there, Dodge is right there in the middle. You've got your backup camera right there in the spoiler. And down here on the exhaust, just like the SXT for the Charger, they're the vent-shaped ones, or the vacuum oval, whatever you want to call them. And they're not even part of the exhaust. The exhaust you can see in there is that circular part. Those are just for show. And the last thing on the outside is the fuel door, which I love. I don't know what it is. It's just something about the design of it. There's nothing special about it. It just looks really cool. On some models, this will be chrome, but this one is black. I think it looks really cool. So one thing that really changes, as soon as you open up the door, you might notice this. It's somewhat similar to the charger where you've got the vent up here and then the connection between those two over there. You've got your regular stuff over here with the automatic powers and door locks and mirrors. But right down here is your door handle, which is not where you expect it to be. It's one of those things where you have to search for it when you're on the inside of the car trying to get out because it's usually somewhere up here. I've done test drives and people are trying to find it. It's down here, which is in a very awkward location. And because this is a two door, a coupe, you don't get the luxury of having a very big back seat like you did before. You do have to get back here, push this forward, and then you have access to the rear. Just like any modern sports car, the seats are there, but you don't have a whole lot of room. So right now I have the front seat set to six foot, which is me. Now I have to try to get back here. This is not for normal sized humans. Okay, there we go. That doesn't work very well. 
This is terrible. Oh god. How am I gonna get out? Oh god. The car's giving birth to me. Oh, my butt. So now that I've squeezed myself and birthed myself out of the back seat, while I was back here, these seats are very deep, unlike a lot of sports cars. Like, this is still a big vehicle, so these back seats are very, very deep. However, because of that deepness, that's my foot room. In order to get my feet in here, I literally have to turn them to the side to get them in, and then turn them so they're under the seat in order to just get my feet in a good position or else I would be uh, I'd be sitting there like really, really uncomfortably like that. So, once it's all said and done and I'm back here and the seat has been adjusted, my knees are uh, rubbing up against the back. So, if I'm back here, I'm gonna have to be spread out, which is not that bad, but if you've got other people in here in the same situation, it's not gonna be good. My knee room is compromised, and if someone uh, in front of me is an adult that's six foot or larger, and I'm the same way, you're gonna be having the same issues back here. Headroom wise, my head is touching the roof up here, and uh, at least I got vents, but I don't have USB chargers. So you gain some and you lose some here in the Challenger. This is what it looks like when I'm sitting up straight. If I slouch down, it'll work, but my head is hitting the top here, so I need to kind of scoop myself down in the seat for my head not to be touching. However, if I sit up straight, I'm, I'm going to be crooked, so back seats are the standard um, sports car to where normal human size people are not going to be comfortable back here but they have them there for insurance purposes and makes the car better looking, cheaper to insure. I don't know, it's stupid. Oh wait, there's a good thing here in the back. This is the first time I've ever seen it, but here in the back seat on both sides, you have a nice padded armrest. Both sides have this. I just noticed that it's a nice, soft, squishy armrest, very comfortable, right in the right place. If I just had some more knee room and head room, this would really be comfortable. Maybe some convenient stuff back here too, but again, this is just the base model. So because the Challenger has such challenging rear seats and the USBs are not there like the Charger, they did do something a little bit different. Here in the armrest center console, you've got the two USBs, auxiliary, and you also have that 12 volt, very deep, that's nice. But if you look here, these two grooves, you've got one for the front, so in front of the seat, and you've got one back here that can go behind the seat. So you can have a wired connection through there with the glove compartment closed and a wire going to the back seats. So while I'm sitting here, two cup holders, nothing special about that, they're offset to make it look fancy. The exact same gear shifter, and looking up here, we have only got Sport. We don't have the Super Track Pack, but the SXT for the base model charger does not even have that Sport option. So there's a win for this one. Of course, you've got the standard Uconnect here, and everything else is pretty standard in here. It does have a sunroof up here, but like I said in the other video for my charger videos that I did, this is completely optional in every model. So just because this one has it doesn't mean yours will if you do decide to get one. Sunglasses can pop in there just like everything else. This one, this one's okay. It doesn't feel super cheap because of that, the closing and opening mechanism that's on there. So I do like that one, get that closed. The base model does have the built-in universal garage door opener you can see right there on the bottom and other than that everything's the same we've got oh yeah come straight out plus you've got the little extension too that seems a little useless if you have this whole thing that comes out but it's there if you need it a lot of cars don't have that but i figured out in the charger that that was an option for dodge 
So the rest of the stuff on the inside of the car is pretty standard. Nothing too out of the ordinary. You can see down here, pedals are the same. The e-brake is one of the push ones with your feet. And uh, yeah, there's nothing really special on the steering wheel. You've got a bunch of blank buttons for the base model. You've got your cruise control stuff, your standard Bluetooth, because Bluetooth does come standard. All your buttons here to go through your little screen up here. There's not really a whole lot to show in here that's different, but there is one thing with the windows. Something that the Challenger does on all of their vehicles is as soon as you open up the door, the window will go down just a little bit. And when you close it, it'll do the same thing. And back up. See how it moves up and down? They do that on the Challenger, but not the Charger. I'm guessing maybe because this one has a lot better ceiling than the other one, maybe it's just a two-door thing, who knows? But that is something that comes with the Challenger. We cannot forget about the trunk space. Now this one, eh, the trunk space is okay. It's not as much as the Charger. You still got plenty of room back here. If you wanna take a look inside, you can see that split. You can put the rear seats down. But uh, I would say you could fit maybe one and a half of me in there compared to the Charger where it's easily two. You can also tell the sides. It's gonna be a bit harder to get larger items in here. So again, this is more of a sports car in the fact where the trunk's gonna be a little bit smaller, less usable than the sedan, and the rear seats are gonna be smaller and less usable. All right, so here we are sitting in the car. Now the first thing I do like is down here on the console itself. It, everything is shift more towards the driver. So you have a little section off here and it reminds me of the new C8 Corvette to where everything is in the driver and uh, the passenger is kind of like, hey, you're not here driving, get out of my way. And I do believe these seats are the exact same ones as the base model in the charger because I don't have anywhere near enough bolstering on the side. I can just flop around. This is not something you want to throw around the corner unless you're uh, you're ready to fly around quite a bit. So bolsterings out on the sides, not so good. And something I talked about a little bit when I was going through the charger, once we get up to GT, there's a super track pack and a sport button. And through that, you can change it around and you can choose what you want on and off when you change it to sport. The Challenger, however, has a sport button, but it doesn't have a super track pack for this SXT. It just has a sport. So there's no customization when it comes to it. You just hit sport right down here. And it's just something that spruces up the shifting and the steering. And it just kind of makes things more sporty, but you can't customize it. It sounds all right. It's a V6. It's meant to be quiet and comfortable. Once we get to the V8, it's gonna sound awesome. And one more thing before I set off, I did notice, and someone, uh, someone else came in and noticed this too, bigger guy. I would say I'm a little bit bigger. I'm six foot, so I'm a bit taller than most people. My head, because of the sunroof, it actually dips down. You'll be able to see it here. The normal roof it, without the sunroof is about right here, but then you get about two extra inches down across this whole thing. The sunroof itself comes up, but you've got this extra bump here in my head. I'm basically all the way down in the seat, and but because of this sunroof, I've got maybe a finger length before I touch the roof. So if I go over a bump, I might actually hit this extended out piece. So if you're a tall person, I do not suggest you get the sunroof or else your head is gonna be hitting this piece here. These things without the sunroof, that whole thing's gone and you've got a ton of headroom. But I am, I'm down as far as I can go because I'm, I'm a taller person. Plus I like sitting low anyway, but that's way too close for comfort. All right, enough talk, away we go.
I've said this many times before, this is, every time I see him, it's a boat. It's just a very large vehicle. But I would like to see how they drive because I do not know how they drive because I haven't driven one before. I've driven in one, does that count? Already starting off, I can tell it's just as quiet as the Charger. This is really weird because you see it on the outside and you're like, oh, it's a big old muscle car. But that V6 is silent. And the same thing, putting it down decent amount, up to speed, super silent. And just like the Charger, it is very comfortable in here. The ride so far has been very smooth. The steering, I would say the steering's a bit tighter than the SXT on the Charger. You can still feel it's, it's comfortable, but right now, I just, I don't have it in sport, I don't have it in anything, right now I'm just driving normally. You get a tiny amount of wind noise, and it sounds like that wind noise is coming from the mirrors. But other than that, I have, I have everything off, I've got the fans off, I've got the radio off. It's creepy quiet in here. Very, very quiet. And just like the Charger, this Challenger has the same engine and same transmission. So it's got the same eight-speed transmission. This one has a little bump in horsepower. It's got 305 horses under the hood compared to the Charger, which is like two, I say around 295. It kind of varies a little bit, but this one's got a bit of a bump in horsepower. Torque's around the same. It's like 260, 270 which is kind of weird because it's, I mean, it is a V6, but still it's a muscle car. I would figure it would have a lot more torque, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna pop it into sport and we'll see the difference. See, it's not that bad. When I put it into sport in the GT, it was much more touchy. Already I can tell it's shifting way higher. It went all the way up to 3,500 RPM before it switched gears, just going around that corner. It wasn't mashing the gas or anything. I'll take my foot off the gas. It doesn't feel like it does a whole lot of gear braking like the GT did in the Charger. Uh, yeah, a little bit, not as aggressive though. All right, so let's do the zero to 60 test on this one. Uh, doesn't have launch control. It's just regular, so I'm gonna do... And these things are still torquey, even though it's not that much. So I'll put it up around... Eh, A little bit of wheel spin there, 60. Yeah, that was... That was all right. I had a little bit of wheel spin just because there's a lot of stuff in the road, but I feel that was a lot, a lot more similar to the Charger. Again, very, very similar. It's the same engine, same transmission. I did get a lot of wheel spin though because the side of the road that I start on has a lot of uh, dirt and rocks and stuff. Definitely, uh, got a little bit of wheel spin there. So now that I'm driving in sport mode, the ride feels, I f it feels a little more stiff, so I can feel more bumps in the road, more inconsistencies in the road. The steering, on the other hand, steering feels exactly the same. So when I did the charger and I put that into sport, sport mode, you could, you could tell. It tightens everything up. This one feels exactly the same. This one definitely doesn't have the same sport setup as the GT. That's for sure. It's not as crisp when you hit the gas. The steering, everything is is a little bit more dulled down compared to that higher trim level on the Charger. But 
they, I guess they have to do something to make it different from the Charger since, I mean, on paper they're so similar besides the body style. They have to do tweaks somewhere. So that's where it's at. They're basically the same horsepower and torque. There's a little bit of a difference. The steering, the ride, everything is very, very similar in both of them. So really the big difference here is is styling. What you're getting for the money is exactly the same. The base model, the GT, and the RT are basically the same between the Charger and the Challenger. The engines are exactly the same, transmissions are exactly the same, and as you've gone through and you've seen my videos of doing reviews, the inside and the features that you get, they are different because there is a little bit of a different styling here, but they're extremely similar, but that the styling points is, is the big difference here. The different style on the outside and a few of the things on the inside, like uh, how it's laid out here, the, the center, how everything's more towards the driver, the amount of room that you're getting compared this to the four-door, you're getting much more room on the four-door for the Charger because you've got the two rear seats and you have that huge trunk that's a lot wider than this one. I don't understand why you would get this one if you had the choice of getting a Charger. It's bigger, it's just as quick, it has the same horsepower torque ratings. I just, uh, the only reason I can see is the look of the car. Some people enjoy this look compared to the, the Charger, but right now, the Challenger, I, just, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it as being worth it compared to the Charger. So at the end of the day, my choice would be for the Charger after doing that one first, base model to base model, and you already know from my comparison between the SXT and the GT for the Charger, $2,000 difference and the more you get for the Charger, at that right now, that's my top pick. The next video I'm gonna do for the Challenger is gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna bump it up to the GT version and see what the differences are and if that one's worth it. But as of right now, I mean, you get a few extra things in this one, but you also lose some stuff in here. So at the end of the day, personally, I would choose the Charger instead of the Challenger. But that's my personal preference. Let me know what you guys think down below. Which one would you choose at the SXT level? Maybe it's not my opinion. Maybe it is my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. And of course, like all my videos that I do here at the dealership, if you want one, if you wanna test drive one, you wanna come on down and do something with features, push some buttons, check me out. I'm at Lee Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Wilson, North Carolina. And my email's also down there. So get a hold of me and we'll, do some sport car stuff with sports cars or muscle cars or maybe you want a van. Vans are freaking cool. I'll do a video on those.